YouTube channel. In this class, we are going to discuss with another topic that is neonatal genetics. Neonatal genetics. This is one of the important basis. Neonatal genetics. Few. First, we will see the neonatal. We have two words there. One is neonat and then genetics. First, we will see what is neonat. What is the age group of neonat? Neonat age group. Neonat age group is 0 to 28 days. First 28 days of a life that is referred as neonat. That is neonat. And then another word is there that is giant days. Giant days. That is nothing but a there will be the yellowish discoloration of the skin of a baby. That is yellowish discoloration. Discoloration of the skin of the skin of a baby. Baby or neonate is called jaundice. That is how much it is? That is more than 4 to 5. More than 5 mg per dl. That is more than 5 mg per dl. Here what happens? More than 500 mg per dl. That is more than 500 mg per dl. Bilirubin level increase. That is more than 5 mg. Here what happens? Hyperbilirubinemia. Here is cause reason. Hyper bilirubinemia. There will be the increased bilirubin level in the blood or increased serum bilirubin in blood, we can say. That is hyper bilirubinemia. You, uh, neonate, that is first 28 days of life of a neonate or a newborn, we can say. And then join this is a yellowish discoloration of the skin of a baby. Felt that bilirubin level exceeds more than 5 mg per dl. That is hypobilirubinemia. Here there are two types. Two types. One is conjugated, another one is unconjugated. Here two types we can see. Two types. Two types bilirubin, uh, that is, first one is a conjugated one. Conjugated or direct or direct we can say. Here, another one is unconjugated, unconjugated or indirect. Two types of bilirubin, that is one is unconjugated and unconjugated. That is in the level less, that is 0.3 mg per dl. And then here more, that is 0.6 mg per dl. Here bilirubin, there is an RBC. There is a RBC, it is going to break down as a chemolysis. RBC is going to break down that is product hemolysis hemolysis it is going to break down in spleen in spleen that's what it is called spleen is called as the graveyard of RBCs it is graveyard of RBC here, what are the RBC that is going to break as hemolysis and then that is going to break down in spleen. Here, you take for example, Hb that is hemoglobin. Hb. Here, Hb and globin. And globin, it is a protein. And then in here, that is iron. Here there is 
iron and a B word in. B word in. B word in is converted into bilirubin. This B word in is converted into bilirubin. Bilirubin by the enzyme. By the enzyme. Which enzyme? That is hepatic glucuronin. Hepatic glucuronin transferase. Transferase. Here, in here, there is an iron and a bilirubin. Bilirubin is converted into bilirubin by the enzyme that is hepatic glucuronin transferase. It is greater and converted to spleen. That's what this hepatic glucuronin transferase. Here, we can see in adults, adults, there is a RBC's lifespan in adults is 120 days and the number of cells is, number of RBC's is 4 to 5 million. 4 to 5 million. But what happens in neonate here? In neonate, it is 6 to 8 million. In neonate, number of RBC's is number of RBC is 6 to 8 million. 6 to 6 to 8 million. And then number of RBC is 6 to 8 million. And then what is the lifespan? 50 to 60 days. Lifespan is less. 50 to 60 days. 50 to 60 days. Here what happens? In adults, there is a number of RBCs, that is number of RBCs is a plus and then lifespan is more, that is 120 days. But here in neonate what happens? Number of RBCs is 6 to 8 million, it is more. Number of RBCs is more, but the lifespan is very less. Lifespan is less. That's what, what happens here? That is hemolysis and that RBC is going to break into hemolysis. Continuously it goes on breaking. That is RBC to hemolysis. RBC to hemolysis. Then what is this bilirubin? Hemolysis end product is bilirubin. Hemolysis end product. Hemolysis end product is end product is what is that? Bilirubin. Bilirubin. HP in neonate is HP, what is the HP in your head? That is 17.20. 20 gram per DL. This is HP in your head, we can say. And then this is all about the jaundice. That is neonatal jaundice. What happens here in neonatal jaundice? There is a phenomena. That is, in the neonates, there will be hyperbilirubinemia, hyper level. That is, there will be an increased level of bilirubin in the blood. Why? Because RBC breaks into hemolysis. And then, due to the number of RBC and lifespan of RBC. Because number of RBC is more and the lifespan of RBC in the neonate is less. That's what it is the cause. Here, in neonatal this. Here in the newborn baby, there are type, types, two types. There are two types of joiners. Two types of joiners. One is physiological, another one is pathological. One is physiological joiners. Physiological joiners. Joiners. Another one is pathological joiners. Pathological jaundice. What happens here? What is physiological jaundice? It's going to occur. It's going to appear after 24 hours of birth of a neonate or a newborn. You know, it is after 24 hours. After 24 hours. 
what is joint is that is yellowish discoloration of a skin of a unit of the newborn that is going to appear that is going to occur after the 24 hours of a birth of a neonate here pathological joint is this it is before 24 hours it is going to occur before 24 hours and 24 hours there will be the yellowish discoloration of a neonate or the newborn we can see in the pathological joint is here physiological joint is it's not a normal it's not a physiology it's not a physical it's not a disease it's not a normal physiology that is physiological joint is and then after that it's going to disappear that is after 24 hours it is a physiological joint is it is not a disease it's not a normal phenomena normal physiology but what happens here pathological joint is before 24 hours. That is pathological. Pathological, what happens here? There will be the RH incompatibility. RH incompatibility. Incompatibility and an ABO incompatibility. ABO incompatibility. And then RH incompatibility, it's also, it's also erythroblastosis vitalis, you can say. Erythroblastosis vitalis. Due to this pathology, due to this pathological condition, there is an ABO incompatibility and the RH incompatibility. That's what is a pathological jointis. This is all about the types of neonatal jointis. Next, we will see the causes for this one. Cause, what is the actual cause? There will be the delayed removal of bilirubin. Delayed removal of bilirubin. It is the one cause for the neonatal jointis. And then next, we will see the symptoms, signs, symptoms. That is, first and foremost, there will be the yellowish discoloration, yellowish skin and whites of the eyes. Sclera becomes yellow. This is whites of the eyes. And then we can see drowsiness, poor feeding, high pitched cry, no weight gain. No weight gain. And then fewer of 100 degree Fahrenheit and the above. This is signs and symptoms of jointis of neonate. And then next we will see the diagnostic evaluation for this. First and foremost, there is the history collection and the physical examination after blood test it is a CBC that is complete blood count this is diagnostic test about and then next we will see the management here management is phototherapy phototherapy and then exchange blood transfusion that is in the pathological joints pathological joints exchange blood transmission method. This is all about the neonatal joints. I hope you all are clear with the topic. Please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.